Hi folks, Ed, W4EDF here. And for those of you who saw our uh, 2014 field day video, uh, you may have actually seen us use this uh, antenna platform that I have here. And what we wanted to do in this particular video is give a uh, sort of a, a run through on how to actually build one of these yourself. Um, the design itself is not an, my own. This actually comes from the weather resistant field antenna by KF7 ETX. Uh, he has a great video on how he built his. Um, his looks much nicer with some, you know, he, he's kind of gone and, and done some nice paint, but really I have to give him credit for at least the inspiration for this. Uh, his antenna and mine differ only slightly and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about as part of this. This is partly going to be a uh, discussion of how to build it, but it's also going to be a discussion on some of the, the uh, I'll say, challenges that you're going to run into when you go to build an antenna, especially like me. You go on YouTube, you see someone come up with this uh, great antenna idea. Um, you know, you go to your Lowe's, your Home Depot, wherever, and you go to make this yourself, and it, it may not go as smooth. So hopefully this will uh, shed some light on some of the, the, the issues that you're going to run into and uh, make it easier for you to, to sort of adapt to the materials you have. So um, first of all, let's talk about the antenna. So the antenna uses, uh, it's all PVC, CPVC materials as far as the plastic goes. Um, you have the gray here is electrical conduit, PVC conduit. Uh, the white is your PVC pipe and your more tan color here is the CPVC. And we're going to talk a little bit about why you use CP CPVC over the PVC and things of that nature. So uh, some of the features of the antenna first. Um, number one, the antenna uses a the, the standard 3 8 24 uh, nut that most of our antennas, at least in, in ham radio, use. Um, and one of those antennas is actually the buddy pull uh, whip antenna. This is the uh, what I believe is the 9 foot buddy pull antenna. And uh, this is the original reason I picked this up. As a matter of fact, uh, KF7ETX uh, originally designed this antenna to be a, uh, a six meter uh, antenna and uh, a six meter dipole is to be specific and as you can see the antenna just screws right into the connector and you can actually then connect in the other and you have your dipole antenna and this will work every, from everything from a two meter all the way out to six meter. Um, of course, you know, with two meter, you are going to be uh, horizontally polarized because of this. Um, there are some things you can do to, 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 to change that, but for, for the sake of, of this particular discussion, um, we'll just talk about the horizontal position. So let me take these off here. And some of the other features. Uh, you, you remember in the video that we actually mounted this on top of a painter pole. And a lot of painter poles use the Acme thread. Um, and fortunately, Buddy Pole makes this great little product, very inexpensive. And it is a, an Acme thread to uh, pipe thread um, adapter. And because your PVC, uh, a lot of your PVC parts use the pipe thread standard, you can actually screw this into the bottom and screw that into your painter pole. And that gives you a very, a very solid mount. It actually works very well. Uh, we've actually had a 40 meter antenna hanging off of this with no problem at all. So that was a very, very nice thing. Um, the other nice thing about this, or the other feature, 
is this eye, uh, the, the eye right here. So we used it on top of a painter pole. We had no trees. We we're in the middle of a field. And the whole, the whole idea is sometimes you don't have trees around to be able to hoist an antenna. So uh, for that, we use the painter pole. And it's a very nice way to get an antenna up, especially if you're in the middle of, you know, with no trees. Um, if you happen to have trees and you can get this up higher, there's, you can mount a, an eye uh, right here and actually hoist this up into a tree. And you can set up your, uh, your antenna that way. This uses the same standard pipe thread that the other uses. Now, what that actually also gives you on top of a way to hoist this is you could actually mount another piece of PVC pipe off of this, and let's say the uh, uh, you have a uh, maybe a two meter uh, Slim Jim antenna, or uh, I believe it is the uh, Elk Mountain. Um, they they do a log uh, log periodic antenna, and you could actually mount that on top of this while using your 6 meter antenna or your 40 or your 20. So it's a really great platform. Um, now granted, you're going to run into sort of, you're not going to be able to put your, you know, a big beam antenna off of this, but within reason, uh, under weight limits, you'll be fine. And uh, so all these features really makes us a nice little sort of platform. Not necessarily an antenna, I think of it more as a platform. So let's take a look a little bit on the inside. And you can see it's a very simple, very simple design. There's no, uh, it's, it's just uh, from the SO239 uh, soldered onto each of the ends here. So let's start with, in this particular one I have, we actually have it, uh, have it so that you can take it apart. And for one, this is the, uh, the mount part here. And this is using CPVC pipe. And this is where we're going to start a little bit in the um, sort of where you're going to run into the challenges. Now, here is just sort of off the shelf. This is Cantex. Um, you can actually get these off of Amazon, as a matter of fact. It's a Cantex uh, half-inch uh, PVC T. Um, these are CPVC, and uh, I believe these are also half inch. These are from, I actually purchased these from uh, Home Depot. And here's where the, the tricky part comes in. Home Depot and Lowe's, for instance, each have their own suppliers of PVC parts, and they're not the same, or not necessarily the same. And each of the suppliers makes their part to a particular specification. Now, the actual part that a plumber would use is actually all to a specification. Your, your pipe thread, your half-inch CPVC, all this is to the specification. But where it, it's more important to us as, as, as hams as we build antennas with it is it's the outside of this particular piece and how it fits into the base of this particular uh, half-inch conduit. The piece from Lowe's pops in there and it's loose. The piece from Home Depot pops in and it's nice and tight. Did you notice I took this apart? I didn't, none of this was actually glued together. And not necessarily by design, just happened to be the way it is. and and. It's been fortunate that I've not because I'm able to take it apart for this video. Um, so this is the thing that you're going to run into when you're actually building antennas and and other type of things with PVC is some of the some of the specifications to the say outside diameter and and the like are going to be different. This is really what it's going to be is you're going to have to really experiment and you're going to have to you're going to want to go to both Lowe's and Home Depot. Don't expect to just go to one place, and you might get lucky, you may not. But if you don't find what you're looking for at the one spot, 
go to the other and you might actually be surprised. Now, the parts that I'm using, the, the, actual, um, the actual manufacturers, we're going to post a, uh, a nice document on sort of the step-by-step -step how to do this with all the manufacturer names so that you can get the exact, or at least to this day, the manufacturer may very well change that later on down the line. Uh, but you'll at least know what I had for this particular part. So, with that, we're going to go on. So, the other thing you'll see is um, we have the, the, uh, the lines coming from the ends into this SO239 connector. Um, this is connected to, by way of this particular nut here. So those of you who've been to the ham shows, you've seen these. This is a kind of a, I'm not even going to say it's a standard, and that's, I guess, one of the other challenges. Number one, trying to find this isn't the easiest thing. Um, they're pretty much all over the ham shows, but trying to look this up on uh, online is a little bit challenging, and, uh, and I still have some difficulty with it. Um, so it is a uh, 3 8 24 thread. The length of this is one inch, but it's not exactly one inch, as of course they have to be. It's actually just a hair under an inch. And this does come into play when you're building this particular antenna. Um, what I actually do is I mount into the end of this, uh, into the end of one of these plugs, I actually mount this nut, and that's actually what use what we use to to connect up our antennas, and then on the other side is what we actually use to connect up the wire going to your uh, your connection. So we're going to talk first about how that's wired up, and this is an example of one of the connections I've made, and this is using a PVC plug half inch with one of these and I'll go into a uh, description of that here in just a bit. Now what I actually use is a, uh, a washer here. I believe this is a, a star washer or something along those lines. And the reason I use this is just to give a little bit because this plug is one inch. One inch exactly, maybe even just a hair over an inch. And this is just a hair under an inch, which means you're actually going to be inset for this nut. So having a star washer, number one, it will help lock in the nut, but will actually give you some sort of lift out of, the, out of that. The next thing that we do is I use uh, just a ring terminal. Um, the ring terminals I'm actually getting from uh, McMaster Car. Very good supplier for things like this because they've got all the different sizes that you need. Um, in fact, I'd probably would recommend going to someone like them than to, to get the ring terminals from, say, uh, your Lowe's or Home Depot, mostly because the price, you're, it's much cheaper to go through them. And again, a lot more variety. So the other piece that I use is this um, 3 8 24 uh, nut. And, uh, or not nut, it's a screw. And this will actually go in like so. And that's actually how I connect from the feed point inside the wire coming up to where the antenna connects up. Um, you can actually use a round head uh, nut and uh, that's another option. I use this. I liked this because it had the knurl and it was easier to get a pair of, of needle nose inside because the problem is, is when you're working with something like this, it's kind of small in there, and it's very difficult to get an Allen wrench and have enough play to be able to move the Allen wrench around. And um, I just used a, uh, just used a uh, pair of needle nose, and that worked. Now the problem is, is it sticks out more than a, the round, uh, the pan head style nut. So, again, depending on the pro the, the the supplies and the parts that you get you may actually have to do that and just sort of work through that. So, I think with that, now we're going to go on to 
how to actually make this particular piece. Okay, now we're going to talk about how I made this particular uh, antenna mount for my antenna. So, in the, uh, in the in the antennas that I've seen online in which this this has been used or this type of an antenna mount has been used, um, it's typical that you drill a hole, put your the antenna the, the the nut inside, and then epoxy around it. When I first started this, that was my uh, whole intention. That's exactly what I was going to do. Um, but it turned out through sort of a happy accident that I didn't need to do that at all. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about here because I think it makes it a little, little bit easier and um, sort of less, less need, perhaps more materials, but uh, it's kind of nice not actually having to use the epoxy uh, in this particular case. So the tools that you're going to need, in fact, well, let's start with this. Uh, this is the uh, this is Lasco. This is from this is from Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's actually carries this particular brand today. Um, so uh, Lasco makes this half inch uh, nut. Uh, sort of, it's an end, end plug for a half inch pipe. Um, and again, we're also going to use the uh, three eighth twenty four nut that I got. This is a one inch. And like I said. It is just a hair under, about maybe a 30 second under uh, one inch. Um, there are, I have actually seen an inch and a half, and in a new version of this, I actually might use it because it's going to stick out a little bit more, offering up some, some new options. So the tools that we're going to use is a 5 8 inch uh, countersink bit. Uh, this particular style of countersink bit, now there's a lot of different countersinks, but this particular style is, is sort of the one that, that worked well for me in this particular case. Um, the next is just an eighth inch drill bit. And then we have a unit bit, a very handy bit for all sorts of drilling holes. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll talk a little bit as we go into using uh, the build of this antenna. It's actually what I used for drilling the holes here. Now, um, the first thing you're going to do is take your countersink bit. And I know this is not what a countersink bit is meant to be used for. It just so happened to work in this particular case. And what makes this and this sort of method work well, is that the bit, as you see, just sits right into the, uh, the end of this plug. And by setting in there, and because of the, the angle on this, it self-centers itself. So it is self-centered into this plug. And that's important because it makes it almost Sort of, it's it's sort of a painless way of being able to, to to get the hole drilled right down in the center of this plug. Now, what you'll do is you'll drill, and be careful. Watch out for heat. Watch out. You know, you're going to want to go down a little bit, come back up. Um, highly recommend a drill press. Uh, if you're going to use a, a hand drill, really make sure that you have the thing up level and square. Uh, also, as far as holding it. You want something that'll hold it, but not hold it solid, because as, you, as I said, this is meant to center. And if it's over a little way, you want the plug to move so it centers itself. Um, I actually use just a, a adjustable wrench that I can set against this, and it is able to move on the platform of my drill press, and uh, goes right down in there. So. This will drill all the way down, and you're going to go down until it reaches the bottom of the plug. Don't go any further than that. You just want it to, to mark a little bit of a mark in the bottom of the plug. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, you now have a mark in the bottom of this plug that is the center, uh, that is actually centered in, in this hole. 
and that is very handy for your eighth inch drill bit to drill through. The other is, is you really do want a little bit of the material on the inside, and I'll show you a little bit later. So step two is to put the eighth inch drill bit in. Make sure the drill bit is centered on the, the, the small divot that was created by the, um, by the countersink and drill through this piece. When you do that, you'll drill all the way through to the other end. Now, that now gives you a perfectly centered spot to take your uni bit, come from the other side on the drill press, and drill down. And you're going to drill this down until the 5 8 inch mark. Um, again, make sure you have a uni bit with a 5 8 inch. And that will go all the way down like so. Now I actually take it down, uh, if you're familiar with the unit bit, uh, each of the step has a bit of almost like a chamfer uh, angle between each step, and I actually let it go just a, a little bit into that chamfer angle, which again gives a bit of a chamfer which helps later on down the line when you're connecting up the antennas, it just sort of opens up a little bit but not too much. So now what you have is this great little piece here with a bit of a ledge that is left of the material that did not get get actually drilled out by the unibit. And that's the beauty of the unibit is because it's at this, this angle, it actually leaves a lot of that material. And that material is where the next step is actually going to come into play. So now that we have this uh, drilled out with the unibit, um, one of the things that you can do is you, you just clean up the edges here and here. Um, you're going to have a little bit of, of kind of uh, material along. I use just a straight, straight uh, razor blade here. Probably not the safest, so certainly don't follow what I do. But uh, you can actually use this to to uh, take off that uh, material there. And uh, so we'll just do that quick. As well as on the other side, there's some of the writing from the, uh, the stamped in information. Uh, the other thing that you can do is take a piece of sandpaper and on the, uh, the nut end here is actually sand it down. Now, remember we said this is only, this is like an inch, uh, an inch high. The nut that we're using is a little bit less and you can really see that difference right here. Um, you could actually sand this down a little bit more, so it doesn't hurt to, to just do this. It smooths it up, it, it makes it look good, and also if you're going to paint it, it gives a good surface for that. So, all right. So now we've got this cleaned up enough. Uh, we want to make sure that this is this doesn't have any any uh, raised edges because this will eventually slide into your conduit here. Uh, you could actually put a bit of a chamfer on this edge just like that. So, all right. So now the next part is that we're going to pressure fit this nut into into here. Um, now, I've actually tried doing this both ways. Uh, I've tried doing it this way in hopes that the material that, you know, I push in, it would push the material out. But what I found is that the, uh, it's very difficult to get the nut to push in straight and it tends to go in at an angle. So in order, really, the easiest way to do this is to bring it in from the top. Um, I use a bench vise in this particular case, but for this example, I'm actually going to use a C-clamp and you use some sacrificial pieces of wood here and that's really to keep from marring up your uh, the PVC as well as the, the nut. And let's get this set up for the and as you can see, this is the benefit of actually using a bench vise, is you don't, it's 
just a few less things that you have to worry about adjusting. Okay, so I'm going to put this in, and again, you want this to go in straight, so you really got to be careful when you're using a C-clamp, certainly, that everything is in line. And once it is, start to compress this in. Now, right up until it comes to the ed to the end, and we're all done. Now the nut is in there. You'll notice some PVC bits kind of coming out. You can just flick those out. And that's it. That is in there nice and tight. Um, it's not going to come out. It screwing in, into an antenna here. That is as secure as you can get. In fact, we'll even push it in here. And there's absolutely no wobble whatsoever. And I've not even pushed this in all the way. Okay. So now we've got the nut in here. Um, in this particular case, you'll, you'll actually see that the from the outside where you're going to be putting the uh, antenna, connecting your antenna, it is a little inset. Um, you can push this out a little ways by taking, say, this particular nut, we can push this in here, and using our clamp, we'll actually bring it just a little bit more, so you can actually push this this nut in just a little bit more. So that evened it up a little bit. And you can push that flush to the other end if you like. If you're using the longer, you know, certainly won't need to do that. So there you go. That is all that is needed to be done. No need to use an epoxy. Um, I suppose the only downside to this as far as, and, and the benefit of an epoxy is, is it's not necessarily waterproof in that if you actually submerge this, the water's going to get in, but, um, you know, I've had this up in the rain and, and not really had any problem of rain coming down in. Perhaps if we were in a torrential downpour, a monsoon, that might be a different story, but I'd say in most cases of, of rain that you're not going to have a problem. So that is the end of how to make this. So now we're going to go on to the uh, last bit, which is really how to drill the, the conduit T to get all your parts. Um, again, a lot of different conduit T's, uh, different sizes that you can get. This particular one, and again, I will put this, uh, the information up on the uh, um, with the video, we'll post uh, all the actual uh, materials, where I get it, and all the specs. And this is from Cantex. I found this is a really nice size. It works really well. Um, it's a little small, um, but if you're patient, it, it will work just fine. As a matter of fact, let me uh, keep this out here. So one of the things you're going to do is you do need to drill a hole in the top, and you need to drill a hole for your uh, SO239 connector. And with this, I use the Unibit. Um, so the really handy thing, again, trying to find the center of this piece of material, where to drill into, um, you actually have the seam line that is at the absolute center of where this hole is. You want this hole to be matched up and centered in with this hole. And the reason for that is that your mounts that you're going to build need to be able to connect like that. So use the seam of the conduit. Use the seam. And just carefully measure. I ended up using the outside. But carefully measure the distance between the two outside ends and find the center spot, 
just uh, center punch it, mark it, and drill down through. You can be off just a, you know, even a sixteenth probably, and, and this will be fine. So it doesn't have to be quite machinist uh, level of uh, accuracy. And so you're going to drill the hole in in which this, uh, this antenna mast, this additional mast in the mount will actually go in. The other is to mount your SO239. And in this particular case, it worked out for me, again, on that center, uh, or I'm sorry, not in the center seam in this particular case. What I looked to do was bring this a little bit over from the edge and mount this kind of in a spot that is out of the way and that leaves me some room. Now, depending on the material that you get, this is, this is probably the one thing that you're just sort of going to have to experiment and look and plan ahead. Uh, in this particular case, it works very well um, that this uh, mounts right into here. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the screw holes on this side are actually drilled on the center line of this seam. Uh, so if you actually happen to use this particular, um, the Cantex uh, T, um, you can just sort of follow from that. And I'll just drill from there, find a spot where that fits, and drill down through. And again with the unit bit. Um, and I don't actually uh, remember exactly what size, but you want it to where it's just, it'll fit in. It's going to be a, a tad loose, but you know you still need to make sure that the wings are fine. So once you get these drilled out, I actually use machine screws. Uh, I use um, uh, stainless steel machine screws and all the, the, for all the parts here. Um, just so happens that if you use an eighth inch uh, bit for the machine screw that I used, I think it was an eighth inch bit. Again, we'll, we'll make sure we have all that information in. Um, the screws will actually sort of self-tap into the plastic, into the PVC, and you won't actually have to use nuts to hold the uh, SO239 connector in. And that's really handy because you can't actually even get one put on the back. Uh, things are so tight inside this, this uh, uh, enclosure that it's just not going to work out. So. Um, you're actually going to make sure that whatever the, the screws that you end up using, make sure that you use a uh, bit that is just small enough that they'll self-tap into the plastic. The only place that I actually did use a nut was for connecting the one uh, antenna uh, connection here. And that was more or less, that was just to, because the, the SO239 really doesn't have another, a way to, to, to solder conveniently to this. Uh, sort of to the outside of the ground part of this so it worked better to just use a, a nut and uh, as well as some lock washers and things of that nature. So that pretty much wraps up um, sort of the construction. Again we'll actually have a better a better kind of step, not really step by step, but we'll have all the information that you need and some photos of the various parts so that you can actually walk through and, and uh, hopefully will be successful at trying to build one of these yourself. Um, another thing that you can do, another great thing about this antenna setup is that and in our field day uh, I didn't actually use the six meter antennas. What I did do was I took some uh, some antenna wire here. In fact, this isn't even antenna wire. This actually, I, I'm a big fan of using, um, and for better or worse, of uh, marine grade uh, stranded wire for my antennas. I like the flexibility of it. Um, it's just a nice wire. It's also, you know, I know where to get it around here. Uh, and uh, let's see, this particular is a 16 gauge wire that, that I use. Um, it's the same wire that I use on the inside of the uh, antenna thing here. But what I did is I took the same ring terminals that I use for connecting on the inside and I attached those to the end of this wire. This allows me to take a nut now and 
connect the wire to the end of my antenna. Now I have a wire dipole. Um, fact for field day, not only did we have our 40 meter wire connected, but I actually made two. And I have one for 20 and one for, uh, one's measured for 20, one's measured for 40. And I put them both. And now we have a 2040 fan dipole off of the end of this. And you see this is, this is just one end of the fan dipole. So this is 20 meter, 40 meter, uh, all wrapped up. It makes it nice and, uh, makes it nice and compact. As you can see with this and another set of the wire, it will fit in a go kit, all any of that kind of stuff. Very, very compact, easy way to get this out to the field. Um, and uh, very useful. So, and you're not really, you're not limited, of course, to 20 meter, 40 meter. You can make any length of these. You can sort of go nuts. Um, I think with this particular nut here, you have enough to, you could probably do three to four um, antenna leads coming off of this, and you'd be fine, and you'd still be able to tighten this down. Uh, the other thing that you could do is we have those. You could then take your six meter, or let's say you have this set up for 20 meter, and instead of using the nut to hold your wire dipole in, you could use your whip dipole as well. So now right there, I would have a three band antenna for 20, 40, and say six meter or two meter, whatever I decide. And uh, that's all up in the air. So say, let's say I have this as a six meter. We're gonna put our Let's see. Put this in. And there. I could actually stand a mount that would let me put, say, a Slim Jim for a 2 meter, 70 centimeter even, off of this. Um, now, of course, for this antenna, you'll have to have a separate, uh, uh, separate feed line going to it. but. But still, it uh, gives you some uh, multiple possibilities for your antenna, um, all off of one, sort of just one, uh, one antenna location. So with that, I hope that was, uh, that was useful. If you have any questions, please um, send, in, send in any questions, any comments. Um, and... Uh, as always, if uh, you like these videos, please subscribe um, down on the bottom there. Uh, we're going to be making more of these over the summer um, and, uh, and hopefully give some, some more as far as antennas, batteries, and, and the like. So um, thank you for your time. This is Ed again, W4EDF and 73.